What's going on, guys? Today I'm gonna throw in the Sparkle R100 racing seat into the 350Z. So if you've been following along, you may know a little bit about this already. Um, I actually don't mind the factory 350Z seats, and these are in pretty decent condition other than a little bit of wear here on the driver's seat. Um, but they hold you in pretty well. The problem is that uh, the bolstering here is just a little too narrow for me. I'm not a huge guy whatsoever, about six feet tall, 190 pounds or so. Um, but I don't even get to really push all the way back in the seat. Um, I'm just, I guess, a little wide for this seat. So, uh, But that's not really the main issue. The main issue is, is that the seat bracket itself, I don't know if it's missing hardware or something's wrong with it, um, but it it moves just on the left side. So uh, if you brake hard or something, this left side of the seat kind of slides forward. Uh, so something is not attaching, something is not connecting or, or um, you know, being secured into place. Uh, so I wanted to switch this out anyway, and I'm not sure what seats I'm gonna go with on this car, but I already have the Sparkle R100, and I got some cheap seat brackets just for the time being um, to, to get the thing installed, and then I'm gonna get some planted seat brackets once Actually, I don't even know if it'll be planted because I gotta decide if I'm gonna get some reclinal, uh, reclinable seats for this car or if we're just gonna go fix back bucket seats for this thing uh, with a harness bar and five point harnesses, the whole nine yards, we're gonna do it. We're going that far with this thing, but I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do yet, but I know that I gotta get this seat out both for stability reasons, but also just for comfort. So we're gonna do it. So we got some hardware here. I'm not sure what these are, maybe 14s or 14, something like that. more back here another reason that you hate working on other people's stuff just cross threaded the hell out of a couple of these bolts holding the seat in fuck uh, we already have an airbag light on because of this aftermarket steering wheel and they didn't do whatever you need to do in order to prevent the airbag light from coming on no airbag in the steering wheel so that's no big deal but we do have the the side airbags so there's going to be a yellow connector underneath the seat i'm almost positive and we're going to put a 2 ohm or 2.2 ohm uh, resistor in it. I don't know if that airbag, because that airbag doesn't work, that this one's not going to work. I I'm not sure. Uh, we already have the light on, so we're not even going to know the difference. But what I would suggest, uh, if you don't, if you're not dealing with the steering wheel issue, uh, uh, unplug the negative terminal on your battery, wait a while, press the brake a bunch of times, uh, make sure all the juice is out of the system. Then you can uh, get underneath this seat, or we'll lean it back here and you'll see in a second, uh, that airbag connector. Um, you disconnect that, you put a, a resistor in there. You can check out my video on my Q50 as well. We did that too. Uh, then you can plug your battery back in later on and it should prevent your airbag light coming on due to the airbag not being there. You have to unplug your battery because if it detects that the connection is not made for your airbag, the light's gonna come on. The dealership's gotta clear it. Uh, it, it it's a nightmare. Gotta push that little tab down there, inside there. That disconnects everything. Usually yellow is airbag, so I'd imagine that's what this one is. And this is probably seat belt, which we're gonna have to swap over. So here's one of these like super cheap seat brackets. Uh, they're terrible, I gotta say. I'd probably, if I was gonna keep them, put some reinforcement in there. Uh, all it would be is like welding some little metal cross pieces here just add some little bit of rigidity but because they're temporary I'm not gonna worry about it but what I will say is that they actually it actually lines up pretty well uh, it's gonna sit low but that shouldn't be a problem the seat is pretty low and I have sl um, sliders on the Sparco seat so it'll it'll lift it up a little bit but I'm surprised the holes actually line up little mounting point for the seat belt I'm gonna see if I can find some resistors and I'll show you what I'm talking about but about the uh, 
the uh, airbag. So for some reason, I'm not able to find my resistors. I had a whole envelope full of them. I even stepped over a few of them that had fallen out on the garage floor the last couple of months, and now I can't find any. It's so annoying. Um, but check out my Q50 uh, Spark OC installation video because I go through the whole thing and I show you the resistors if you haven't seen one. But so it's a resistor. It provides... Uh, it gives you the ability to sort of jump these two little pinholes together. Uh, it kind of tricks the system to think that it's actually plugged in when it's not. Uh, it's when that resistance is no longer there. That's when the airbags blow, basically. Uh, you know how an airbag system works. Um, so again, that resistor sort of tricks it to think that this is actually plugged in and functioning properly, and that'll prevent that airbag light from popping up. So um, again, check out my Q50 video, but do that as you're at your own risk, obviously. Um, you're, you're eliminating your airbags and your protective device in your vehicle, so don't take my word for it. See my nice planted seat bracket here on the bottom of the Sparko compared to this piece of crap. I'm going to take these little uh, Allen bolts out and then we'll just transfer this bracket right onto the Sparko sliders. Planted bracket served me well. Set this guy in place. And of course, it doesn't line up. Conveniently, the seat belt is held on with just a, a 14 millimeter bolt as well. All right, went and grabbed some hardware this morning, drilled a couple of little holes, and we got the seat bracket bolted on. So we're ready to go. lined up we're gonna get underneath and hook up the seat belt plug seat belt plug plugged in I'm gonna use this little cubby spot here and uh, tuck the wires a little bit smart thing to do is get all of your bolts started just finger tight to make sure everything lines up if you start tightening them down you'll never get the bracket to line up even some of the nicest highest quality brackets they get a little warped and wonky here and there uh, but these are all finger tight and we got them all threaded in and we'll lock them down. All right, there we go. She's all bolted down, set into place. I guess I should have sat in it first. Make sure it even feels good or it fits right. Uh, but it fits in the car well. Hopefully the door closes perfectly tight there. Well, I guess we'll find out. All right, so it actually fits quite well. It sits really nice. It's a little bit low. And I got to sit the, uh, the seat back a little straighter up. Uh, to be in a good position. I may have pulled it a little bit forward here because uh, one problem I ran into is the seat belt buckle location. Now these Sparkle R100 seats are, I don't want to say universal, but you they're both the same passenger and driver side. So they have recliner the recliner knobs on both sides. And because it's on this side, it actually runs into the seat belt when you slide the seat forward. And so I need to get rid of this handle. I think this plastic handle it's just a cap and it extends this much. So if I'm just gonna pop this plastic cap off and then we should have enough clearance from the seat belt. Uh, but if you know a shorter person were to drive this uh, and they slid the seat forward, it actually pushes that handle up and that would recline the seat or the seat back wouldn't hold into place. So I guess that's a, another point for going with the fixed back bucket seats. No, re, no, no worry about having to recline or anything like that. Uh, so we may end up going that route, but I think for now this, Looks pretty good. I like the seat in here, uh, and it's not too far off from that seat. But the bolstering here on the sides uh, sticks out a little bit more, and it's a little bit wider, so you can really tuck back in here, and you feel held into place. And these, the bolstering by the thighs is the same. Like I said, the factory seats aren't bad at all. Um, they're just not all that secure, especially if you're a little bigger person. There it is, the final position. I did just uh, knock that little plastic handle off. It's just kind of an extension. Uh, give you a little extra leverage and that gave me enough room. So the seat belt buckle is in a nice position. Uh, it fits just fine across the shoulder and the lap. Uh, it's not ideal. Obviously we're going to get the harness bar and five point harness in the uh, very near future. So 
this will do for now and the seat is quite comfortable. It's a perfect seating position. I think I still have enough headroom uh, for a helmet. I think we're sitting pretty good. Looks pretty sweet. Guys, I'll put links in the description below for those really, really cheap seat brackets that I picked up. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them if your car is like a daily driver, uh, but if you're just doing some track day stuff and or you need a quick solution while you're uh, temporarily installing a, a bucket seat or something while you're putting some miles on to break in your clutch, for example, uh, these you know might be a good option for you. Uh, they fit well, I gotta say that. I had to drill a couple of extra holes uh, to get the seat bracket to work, but uh, you can make that happen. That's no problem. So uh, I, I, they're not something that I would completely recommend, but again, if you're in a binder, you need something really quick to work, uh, those might be an option for you. So stick around for when we get real seat brackets and we finally figure out what we're gonna do with seats for this car. But for now, uh, that should be good enough to get us some miles on this new clutch and uh, continue on with some of the other things we need to do. Uh, axles, wheel bearings and hubs, uh, rear diff bushings, stainless brake lines. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up immediately, so stick around. If you Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I get to every single one of them. Uh, again, if you have any further installation of uh, uh, racing seat installation questions, check out my Q50 racing seat installation video. Uh, that's a little bit more in depth with the resistor and everything like that that I talked about. Again, thanks for watching. I appreciate the continued support very, very much. We'll see you in the next one.